in lump sum due to the credit card processing or whatever, I could have checked all three of those invoices off and deposited them directly into the checking account as one lump sum, which hopefully would tie out to the, the, the bank statement for the bank reconciliation. Or if they were gonna hit the bank statement in three separate deposits, I could have chosen them one at a time and simply put them right into the checking account. So the clearing account is redundant in this example, but again, you, you could imagine a situation where you might get paid in something other than invoices where you still might have a need for the clearing account if you also are receiving receipt payments uh, from clients. Probably for many companies that wouldn't be the case because you would probably be receiving your payments in whatever the normal cycle is. If you invoice, that's usually the, the way you're gonna be receiving the payments through the invoice, although you could have different payment processors, credit cards, different intermediate pay PayPals and whatnot, and cash and checks and whatnot that, that could be grouped together in strange ways sometimes. So the clearing account's good good to get a get a grasp of. The check the accounts receivables now at eleven one twenty two fifty. If I go to the aged account, we now have Smith guitars off the book. So there's the eleven one twenty two fifty. If I go to the first tab, we can hit the drop down and invoices. That drop is down. That's a down drop. We're going to hit this. Uh, let's go to the awaiting payment. So dropping down, just like dropping into a half pipe with a skateboard or something. It's a drop down. So paid and then the paid items look good. I don't know what I'm talking about. Apologize. I apologize for the rambling. And uh, Smith Guitars, if we go down to Smith Guitars... Smith guitars. Uh, there we have it. So that looks good. Now I actually have a correction that I need to make here. So if I go to the first tab and I go to the business dropdown and we look at our uh, invoices, then the ones awaiting payments, what I wanted to do was pick up this one for Jones guitars and I picked up the other one. So if I go into the paid area, I went into jones guitars and picked this one so what i'd like to do is uh undo this transaction and then pick the other one and obviously i did that totally on purpose so we can test this process out so one way to do that i'm going to go into the transaction actually drilling down on it from the financial statement and then delete it from there so i'm going to go to the balance sheet and then in i know it posted to the clearing account here so i'm going to go into the clearing account and then I'm gonna find that transaction and drill back down into the source. So I'm gonna say there's the one for Jones Guitars. I'm gonna go into that. And then we have the options up top. So this is the batch receipt. I'm gonna hit the option up top and we wanna say remove and redo. So I'm gonna remove it. And so cash uh, clearing account. So there we have it. So then I'm gonna go back to the first tab over here and then refresh this one that is awaiting the payments. So now we have Jones Guitars back on the books. So there's the Jones Guitars. And the one I want to pick up is this uh, 7,500. So let's pick that one up instead and make the deposit for it. And this happened once again on January 18th. And I'm just going to say deposit. And so it's going to go into the Clarion account, Jones Guitars. Let's try it again. Let's deposit it. And then I have to recreate the balance sheet because I messed it up in this tab here. Accounting drop down reports. Actually, I don't need to go to reports. I just go right down to the balance sheet because it's in my favorite reports here. I put a little star next to it and everything. So we're just going to that one. And let's change the range and bring it up to 2023. And okay, update. Okay, so now we're at the clearing account at 20,500 here and the accounts receivable at 822150. If I look at my aged account and update that one, we then have uh, Anderson and Jones Guitars there's the 822150. All right, let's also see it in the form of a trial balance and just check our numbers as of this point in time. So I'm going to hit 
the drop down up top and let's go into our reports and type in trial balance up top. I'm gonna go in the trial. I should put it into my favorites, but I'll just type it in here, trial balance. Type it and it shall come. Type it and it shall come. And so then we're gonna hit the drop down and we're gonna say custom date range 2023 and update. So this is what we have thus far. Uh, if your numbers tied out last time, then you would think the only things that changed uh, that could be off if you made an error or whatnot would be the 20,500 and the uh, 822150 because that's those are the accounts that we worked on this time. And I showed you quite intentionally uh, what you can do if there's an error that happens. You can drill back down onto those source documents and make the adjustments uh, that you need to make usually it's a date issue oftentimes especially with the practice problem so you can expand the date range and see if it is a date issue if these two numbers change or if any of the numbers change when you expand the range then you can drill back down onto the source documents and make the adjustments necessary